Tales of the Legion Project Podcast, Legion of Superheroes by Bendis and Sook, Issues 1 through 6. And welcome back to the Legion Project Podcast. This is episode nine of the Tales of the Legion Project Podcast. I am Peter. And I am Eric. And we are here to talk about uh, not the Baxter run, which is why we're doing this in a Tales episode, but to talk about the quote-unquote current, or maybe I should say the most recent mm. Legion of Super- Superheroes series uh, that started in late 2019, only ran for 12 ep- issues. We are going to cover issues one through six in this episode. Yeah, not to be confused with the, with, with maybe the, is the most current title mm-hmm. that is currently at the time of this recording being published, which is the Justice League versus the Legion of Superheroes. Right, right, yeah. This volume is referred to as volume number eight. I have some thoughts about that. (laughs) (laughs) Um, But the Tales part of our Legion Project podcast allows us to move away from the 80s into wherever it is we want to go. And where we want to go this episode is 2019. Yeah, we're like four decades later now. (laughs) Yeah, right. (laughs) We, we went to the future. Um, we will definitely name more of the creative team as we get into the issues in a bit. I don't want to just single out Bendis and Sook, obviously. Mm-hmm. Um, do we have to... Uh, we did cover issue one in a previous Tales podcast. Um, pro- I think it was even shortly when the first issue had shipped yeah shortly after that yeah and we wrapped it up into a larger discussion of not only the first issue but also where we got a chance to look at other reboots Mm. um most notably the zero hour reboot and then the mark wade barry kitson reboot the three boot and we were able to compare and contrast and it was really an episode about legion first issues if you want to call it that you know um so people can go back and listen to that you know there's definitely some you know in-depth conversation about issue one but this episode we're going to try to talk about all six you know as a whole and then maybe some finer points and and you know i have questions and you know we're going to see how this conversation goes Mm -hmm. (laughs) this has been something we've been waiting for for a while (laughs) Eric has read these issues. You're on your what? Second read, third read by now? Yeah, so at least the second uh, for for these first six issues, for sure. Okay. And I realized I read at least the first three, and then I had stopped. And now ah. reread the first three again, read the second three. So I'm all caught up, at least for issue six. I do not know anything about 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Interesting. So, you know, you're going to have, you know, if I say some things, I'm sure you're probably going to have some interesting thoughts about, you know, those later issues, you know, well, I have not read them. So that de- that depends on how much my memory uh, <laughs> serves me. And here lately, that's not, it, it doesn't, it does not do a good job. Yeah. I'm about ready to fire my memory. Oh, no. <laughs> well, but I have, but I have, a, I do have a question for you. Okay. Since you just said this, you, you read the first three issues and stopped. Uh, is that an indication of the quality of the series as a, as a whole, the first six issues, I mean, or was it other factors that were involved that, uh, got you sidelined from reading the other three until now? I think it was just that I knew we were eventually going to read and, and podcast about this. And I thought, eh, I'll just wait. 
okay. it, it wasn't one of those top of the stack kind of reads for me. And <laughs> there's so much dialogue, and yet there's very little that happens issue to issue that I was forgetting what ex- not not even really forgetting. I was just like an, I was just like. Eh, eh, is it worth reading issue to issue? You know, that's one of my questions. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like, is it worth reading issue to issue? Is it better? Part of the reason why we're doing it this way is because if you're getting the trades or if you're interested in the trade, I'm sure there's a trade of just the first six and the second six. I don't know. Did they do a, a trade of all 12 yet? No. Uh, okay. In fact, the, the the first trade, which is subtitled Millennium, which uh, can give you a pointer there, they included the first two issue. Well, so they they included the Legion of Superheroes Millennium two issue mini that introduced Rose. Uh, what's her What's her last name? Peter Forest. Forest. Thank you. Forest for the trees. Uh, they introduced Rose Forest and her trek through DC's future history. Uh, culminating in her arriving in the 31st century and the introduction of the Legion of Superheroes. Right. And so you get that, and then you get the next six issues in that first collection. No Superman stuff in it, I wonder? Uh, not that I saw, no. No. I think that's kind of important, the Superman. I, yeah, yeah. There, I mean, yeah, there were, there were several of those Superman issues, and in fact, there, there was also, which I did not actually realize until just recently when when I started reading stuff and looking up things for this, for this discussion, uh, there was an appearance of, of, uh, the Legion in a Supergirl issue as well. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I had no idea. So the, obviously I, well, I, I probably didn't do a good job of, of, uh, keeping track of where, uh, the Legion were, was appearing at that time, but, uh, you know, I also blame DC a little bit for not <laughs> promoting it better. I don't know. I think they, I mean, one of the things we talked about in that previous episode is that they, or we were talking about in lead ups to that episode Mm. was that the, the initial promotion was pretty good. It was pretty out there. And then once the series opened, then it sort of faded away, faded or, or disappeared. Yeah. Completely. (laughs) I mean, if I wasn't getting the issues, if I wasn't already subscribed to get those, those issues, I, where where were they cross promoting where were they i'm sure there were ads and stuff that i'm not i'm not remembering but uh it seemed like as soon as they launched that millennium series and uh the the, the legion aspect of the superman stories went away it was uh you know persona non grata mm-hmm. for the legion in in modern in the modern dcu timeline okay well, let's dig in. Let's uh, let's get in. We have six issues to go through. Uh, we probably won't be as detailed as we are when we do our normal Legion of uh, Legion Project podcast, where we only really have one issue to focus on. Mm-hmm. We have six, so uh, you know, we, it should only six. take us four hours. <laughs> we'll probably talk some large points and then hit smaller things here and there. But um, yeah, so uh, let's start. What do you got for us? Uh, am I doing summary for the series? Sure. Okay. Uh, forgive this. This is I, Peter, I wrote this, um, minutes before we got online to talk because <laughs> I forgot to do it. All right. Uh, Legion of Superheroes, um, uh, as, as I said, uh, the collection is called Millennium, but you know, the first six issues here. So John Kent, Superboy, the founder of Unity Day and what became, uh, what becomes the United Planets is brought to the 31st century to join the Legion of Superheroes a group of young people from across the galaxy who, are in, who were inspired by the 21st century's greatest heroes. Uh, Ultra Boy, one of the members of the team, acquires the legendary trident of Aquaman from the Horaz and the magician Mordru, which turns out to be, the trident turns out to be a portal containing the oceans of old Earth. The Legion insists that Superboy experience their orientation program in order for John to better acclimate himself to this new world, which also gives John and us, background on how the team was formed. The Horaz then attack Earth with the Trident, and the Legion defeats them, but not before Earth's oceans are restored. The president of the United Planets, R.J. Brand, wants to celebrate this development, but Ultra Boy's father, Krav the General Na, who also sought the Trident, renounces his membership in the United Planets and threatens war. And I'm sure I missed some things along the way there, but I tried to keep it as brief as possible. 
I mean, I, 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 I tend to take very detailed notes, obviously, when we do those other episodes. And in this one, I started to, and then I really kind of um, just tried to hit bullet points as opposed mm. to page yep. by page stuff. That's what I did too. Yeah. And I, I came up with the first issue is both Superboy and our introduction to, if you hadn't read anything previously, to the Legion of Superheroes, to New Earth, to some hints of why they wanted to get Superboy in, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then the second issue, if the first issue was a setup, the second issue is uh, shows how a large group like this has has um trouble navigating what to do because it's so large right so the second issue is more about like we have a situation okay let's discuss let's discuss let's debate they finally get to that you know to they make a decision of what to do while we still are being introduced to the the team because the second issue really nothing really happened the third issue is really the one i was trying what i was saying before about okay we have all these places we need to go to we need to split up rimbor talking to mordru uh superboy goes and gets damien and everything goes bad like all three of those things go south because mm -hmm. they're so brand new and they just don't know what to do and it's they're they're young and they they're overwhelmed Four and five are the origin of the Legion of Superheroes, more in issue five than issue four, and it's acclimating Superboy to their origin, but also to new readers. And then new, number six is kind of like the culmination of certain threads throughout the first mm -hmm. five issues. It's the action issue, quote unquote, um, uh, not only about the Trident, but some things about the president, et cetera. Uh, and then like out of nowhere, it resolves like in between the gutters and then leaves us on a cliffhanger for whatever's going to be for the next six. So mm -hmm. those are, that's how I, f if I had to do a synopsis of what I felt about yep. each issue. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think that's a pretty, pretty good, uh, summation of, of each issue. Yeah. 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 Um, uh, let me give some, you want to give some. General thoughts? Should we let? Should we go to general thoughts now? Yeah, you think? let's do yeah. that. All right, I'll start since you've okay. read these, uh, and we'll see what what you have to say. Um, one person on Twitter when I posted, you know, did anybody have any thoughts on this? This was um, uh, Sean, right, from the Secret mm -hmm. Wars and Beyond podcast, right? Yep. Yep. Yep wrote, I was so excited to have the Legion back. The art is great and there are fun moments, but ultimately the story feels really decompressed. It doesn't have real tension and fails to introduce most of the characters in a meaningful way. Mm -hmm. So that comment about decompressed is a, a word that we've been dealing with since like, since Bendis took over Avengers way back in, you know, 2000, whatever. Yeah. And it's a, it's a, it's like a bad word in comics, right? Uh, when something is decompressed, people are like, ugh, it's decompressed. They're writing for the trade. You know, they stretch the story out. We make jokes when we read like a story in the eighties, we're like, oh, if this was written in the two thousands, instead of being two issues, it would be eight issues. You know? mm, yep. Yep. And most of the times I don't like to use that word because I do think it's a shorthand for sometimes it's, it's falsely labeled fake news. You know, sometimes it's, <laughs> sometimes it's, it's not the word they're really looking for. However, <laughs> I do agree with it this time <laughs> around, okay. but, it's, but it's odd because it's not decompressed in its dialogue. No, right? you can't say it's decompressed in its dialogue. And it is a cast of thousands, so part of me is like, it has to play out like this. But when you look at the points, the plot points of A to B to C, we got to A to B, and then like, we barely got out of that, right? Like, it, it just, mm -hmm. 
there's very little that actually happens in a book where a lot of things happen and a lot of things don't happen. Yeah. So I also don't know how they could have done anything differently w without Bendis going against his normal writing style. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Yep. So that made for a frustrating read because there's so much to read and yet there's so little that happens sometimes. Um, I will say that the, the issue five origin story stuff, I, I kind of like that. And there are, there are scenes and moments, like Sean said, there are scenes and moments that I do like. There are things mm -hmm. that I really do like, but there's a lot that just kind of drifts away. It just falls away. Like the Robin thing. It's in issue three, and then that's it. Like they, you know, it may come around again, but okay, whatever. The, the, <laughs> the biggest one, and we've talked about this before, Rose Forest. What the heck? Like, why mm -hmm. even introduce that character in the prologue series? If you're barely going to use, she's used as a spokesperson, a liaison. She's kind of like the Siobhan Aaron of this yeah. comic. And for as um, the amount of weight they put on her to be inspirational for the Legion, she is not part of their origin. And that's frustrating. I don't know if that plays out in the remaining issues. Um, a lot of new characters. Issue six says, meet the new recruits, Dr. Fate, Gold Lantern, Superboy, Monster Boy. We saw Monster Boy. We saw what Gold Lantern did, could do. In that issue, we did not see Dr. Fate do anything. Mm -hmm. So we have all these characters, and we don't really get to see them. We get to hear them, but we don't get to see them do a lot. Yeah, And if they do do a lot, it's just a bunch of generic big fight scenes and you see some of their powers, but you don't get to hone in on what they are. So there are 40 balls being juggled in this book and the ones that I want never get back down to the hands, right? They're always like up in the air somewhere. And it's like, mm. when, when do they get to, when do we get to grab them and stay with them longer? You know? So it's a, I, I'm really frustrated by this book. Mm-hmm. So those are my so, big thoughts. Something you just you just said uh, sparked a thought here. Um, uh, if if you think about considering that we are examining the Baxter run uh, issue by issue in the way that we are, um, you'll notice in those issues that uh, Levitz and company often will focus on a few of the characters, and and you know uh, have a have a few of those those plot lines running through each issue, but we never, we rarely get a, uh, an issue that is focused on the entire team, except for maybe a shot or two. Right. And I, I, from my uh, recollection of reading even older issues of the Legion, um, that seemed to be the case for that too. I wonder if Bendis was trying to uh, not only break that mold, but, but trying to figure out a way to do what I think Levitz and other writers and artists involved with the Legion have already proven works well, which is you can't have an entire uh, uh, issue with every character of the Legion because we we're talking 30 plus, I think, it, I, I think I counted um, 34 Legionnaires. Wow. Uh, and then the supporting cast members uh, involved in this or, or, or uh, secondary cast members in the, in the series, that's way too many, way too many characters to focus a whole story on. Right. Not to mention, we got a bunch of newer, like you just mentioned, we got a bunch of newer type of legionnaires. Um, but we have the, the, the more familiar ones too, and, but they're different and, how how are the, how is this future different? How is this different from before? And so, all those <laughs> juggling—that's a great metaphor for this. You know, I think Bendis was just trying to juggle way too many, <laughs> way too many of those balls, and <laughs> and, and uh, was not doing a good job of it. And and you know, who knows what else was going on behind the scenes? You know, it's obvious if you if you if you have if you have read Legion of Superheroes Millennium, 
and what what it seemed like they wanted to do with Legion or, or DC's future history, and in particular uh, Rose Forrest, her involvement in all of this, uh, that seemed to have changed. And I don't know if that's on Bendis's part or or DC's part. And then you know it just kind of uh, I, I don't want to use this word, but devolves from there. And maybe some of it is reader reaction, right? Maybe mm. some of it is reader response, sales response, you know, where they did the two millennium issues and they were like, mm, <laughs> man, to cut back on the roasting. Now I'm looking at the schedule. Issue one came out in November of 2019. Issue six came out in June of 2020. It had a little bit of a gap there because of the pandemic, right? It went from March to June, um, issue five to issue six. Now, but that doesn't necessarily mean it was created during the pandemic, right? Like mm -hmm, it probably mm -hmm. issue six was wrapped up maybe right as the pandemic was starting in March of 2020. So at least for these six issues, they're going in with their original ideas, right? They're going yeah. in with, with the idea of whatever you could probably even say that for the next couple issues too, until, until it really starts to get affected by, I think the the outcome of this, what they may have wanted to do. And which is why we're only getting it now, the whole justice league and legion of superheroes, the great darkness thing, because Bendis wanted to do great darkness and Williamson wanted to do great. Like, you know, I think that they had to change some of those ideas, those big yeah. ideas and, yeah. and bring it on together. Right. Um, yeah, I I think th so. Here's a here's a question. This what you said about too many characters. I totally agree. I wrote in my notes here. It's not fair, but I feel like Bendis should have taken a page from Levitt's short sequences, multiple plot points, not everyone in every scene. Focus on like I think issue one does that really well because we're only introduced right away to Ultra Boy and Karate Kid and Star Boy and Wildfire. So you get to see their powers. Are they the same like we know? And we're obviously talking about this book as longtime Legion fans. I have comments about how to read this if you're not a longtime Legion fan, but we'll talk about that later. Um so it introduced those characters, and then we got Saturn Girl with Superboy. Like we we got some interpersonal stuff which gave us some character stuff which was great we then rarely got that as we go on every now and then you would get a little dip into some character stuff even the opening splash pages on some of the issues like with dawn star and cosmic boy like okay that's good you know yep. we get you yep. know i actually like those even mm -hmm. though they you know they are what they are so i yeah i said did he need to take a page from the Levitt stuff and try to give us multiple points that multiple plots that then weave into a bigger story by issue six, you know, um, you know, so then I have to think, well, why didn't, why did he want the entire team and why did he want Superboy? And, you know, it's a Legion of Superheroes book. Part of me then went, what if they would have entitled this Superboy and the Legion of Superheroes? Because the focus, we do get Superboy through all this, mm -hmm. right? Then I think it might pull, pull the impulse that I have to explore the Legion and make it, make myself explore it through Superboy instead of the Legion. Does that, hmm. you know what I mean? I, I understand what you're saying. Uh, one of my complaints about this series, <laughs> generally speaking, was... I felt like they focused too much on Superboy. Oh, interesting. So, but but I totally understand what you're what you're what you're talking about. That yeah, it's this this push and pull that we're getting. Uh, I think that that the creators may have may have struggled with, um, and we're we're kind of uh, uh, picking up on that because you know it's uh, well, it's there's just there's just so much history here, so much backstory, so much so much baggage. That um, and I'll go and I'll go back to something that you said multiple times on the show uh, when we were discussing this new Legion book coming uh, when it was announced and whatnot. Um, I believe you know I, I should let you, you you speak for yourself, but but you basically said something uh, to the effect of that uh, they should just 
uh, you know, go, go another thousand years in the future and just totally re redo it from the ground up all new characters, all different concepts, that kind of a thing. Right. And instead we get things that are very familiar to us with a few, mm, uh, cosmetic changes. Yeah. Really. Um, so, you know, it's, 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 there's just all this stuff, this baggage, like I said, that's, that's playing into this and, you know, and obviously, you know, we, we weren't as satisfied uh, with it as perhaps uh, DC Comics would like us to be and, and uh, uh, you know, compound that by everybody else. And, you know, who knows what the sales were. Uh, but um, th- there's just a lot to do here and, and still try to touch, uh, have a, a touchstone with what came before. So I don't, I don't envy what Bendis and Sook were trying to accomplish in the way that they were trying to accomplish. I think it were, but, but I think they were trying to do way too much of that. Um, let's make it as f- familiar as possible while still trying to blaze new ground. And it was, there was just way too much of that kind of, uh, dare I say fan service. Yeah. Because I, I tried to think of this in terms of, so I, so I thought of it in two ways. If a new reader was reading this, a new reader to the Legion, not new new to comics, but just to the Legion, what do they focus on? Yeah, uh, you know, I, I I guess you just focus on the plots, and maybe maybe as being you know us being longtime Legion fans, we're trying to dig too much in when we really should just read it and take the plot points as they come, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But that's not the fun of the Legion. The fun of the Legion <laughs> is to know where what planets they are from and what powers they have. And and Superboy says it's to Robin in issue three. Like he's like, it's really great. Everybody's from a different planet. Everybody has one power. Okay, good. That's Legion. But then we don't necessarily get to see it in play. Mm-hmm. We get hints of it. Like yeah. Superboy says to Bouncing Boy, Wow, you're really strong when they're trying to push him back into the computer device so he can learn about the legion uh, i was like oh okay that's interesting we've seen and we even see a, a fight scene with bouncing boy like going boom, boom 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 like really just knocking people out and then superboy says he's superboy says he's strong mm-hmm. okay where else to, can i get that i can't you know I, then there's nothing else from it right it's little 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 hints yeah here and there right Saturn girl tries to make everybody fall asleep, but she can't, she's not so specific in that power and winds up making other legionnaires fall asleep too. You know, like, okay, there's something fun about that. Can we push that a little more somewhere? But so that's coming from a long time reader, right? Someone new to the Legion. Does any of that mean anything to them? Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I'm just going to push back on that uh, by by the the idea of well, you know this this stuff has to unfold in, in a normal situation. In a and in, if you're introducing a new superhero team, you would you would unfold these 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 ideas, these mm-hmm. um, plot points, these character moments over time, uh, and I think that's what exactly what he's doing. That's how that's how Bennis is approaching this. Uh, little snippets here, little little pieces there. And uh, allowing Sook to uh, drive the story a certain way through the visuals that that he's created. Sure. Um, but that, that goes, again, it goes back to what I was saying about that push and pull, right? For uh, there's just so much to it that you get lost, and I think that applies to both longtime readers like us and the new ones. What do you focus on? Like I think you said that. Or who do you focus on? Yeah. Exactly. Besides Superboy, it's like it's it's kind of like your description of, of Bouncing Boy in that one scene where he's pinging off everything, right? I that's how I felt as a reader. Yeah. And I've been reading the Legion for, you know, 35 something years. Yeah. Yeah. Like if we got it with Monster Boy, right? We got when they're doing the big evacuation in the issue five and six where or issue six. And he's turned into a big it almost looked like a Mars attacks kind of uh, monster. Yes. <laughs> and and they're like, uh, uh, maybe you shouldn't pick something so scary while everybody's in a panic. And he's like, look, I don't get to choose what form I get to take in a situation like this. So you just need to, you know, stop being so, so specious. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, 
okay. Okay, that's that's two panels, you know, and and in a Paul Levitz thing, you know, we probably would have not. I don't want to compare. I'm sorry, but <laughs> we probably would have got a little more conversation. So it's weird. That's why I go back to that whole thing. It's decompressed, and yet it's not mm-hmm. because that's not decompressed. That's like super compressed, you know. Um, so that's why I said, okay, is maybe it should be called Superboy and Legion. Then I was like. Should this effing book should have just been could it <laughs> it should have just been something else completely. It shouldn't have been Legion at all. Right? Like I feel like in many ways, that's the hard thing about it being a, a Legion, longtime Legion reader and coming to this. It's like just make it different. Just just make it different. Don't mm-hmm. make it Legion, you know, because you're tickling me and it's not fair. <laughs> so then I was like, and we're still, I guess we're still talking general thoughts here. Um, then I was like, maybe I'm being too hard because I would love a comic book reader to reach. If, there, if someone is listening, I, I can't imagine they're listening to this if they, if they don't already read Legion. But I would love to find a comic book reader that has never read any yeah. Legion ever. Not to read this, to read the first six issue of the Baxter run. Mm. And I want them to, I want to see if they, I don't want to, pers- you know, don't give them any kind of like, you know, I'm not giving you any instructions. I'm not going to, I I'll, just read it, come back. And then I'll ask you questions because then I want to see, are those six issues as impenetrable as these six issues for, mm. if they were a new lead, like, does it have the same thing? Do you look at characters and go, well, I don't know who that is. Are their powers explored? You know, it's this big battle with the Legion. A whole, it's a lot of characters, right? You know, I, I want to see if I'm being unfair to this or, you know, because I'm allowing certain prejudices or biases or whatever. Or is it just the nature of this giant of a team and this kind of concept that is, that's why people stay away but then part of me goes, why are there so many X-Men fans? Because there are a thousand <laughs> X-Men fans and a thousand X-Men books. Right. And nobody, you know, not many people reading X-Men started with Jack Kirby and Stan Lee, X-Men number mm-hmm. one. Mm-hmm. You know, mine was issue 180 or 181, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and even the Baxter issue is sort of unfair because that is written with the knowledge that there is there's another Legion title that there's history. So I don't know, maybe somebody has to read the first six of Mark Wade's or the, you know what I mean? Maybe they need to go into another reboot and is it as impenetrable to a non Legion? Like I feel this would be, um, Oh, you know, the ones that we think are great. You know, that's what I'm trying to get to. Like we love those issues. Maybe somebody loves these issues. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and we're, we're, I'm being, I'm being too much of a stick in the mud about them. Oh my God. So many thoughts now based on what you just said. (laughs) So, okay. First of all, just to touch on your X-Men thing, I'm actually going through that because I'm, I'm, I'm reading uh, Hickman's Hickman written X-Men in trade. Mm -hmm. And I've never really read a a lot of X-Men ever. And so I I'm coming into this with, a bajillion characters like like with with this book right i don't in fact i i just i just recorded um an episode to come out soon where i'm talking about volume three and about specific characters that i had no knowledge of whatsoever until i read them on that page i'm like well who is this what, what's their powers and all sure, this stuff sure. but but i got it by reading reading through it hmm. um so so that's a that's a really good point i uh which leads me to the next one when you mentioned those first six issues of the Baxter run, I'm like, Oh yeah, there are some similarities here in terms of plot. Um, uh, so that would be a good comparison, but I, but I love, I love your, your, your idea about, I think, I think the, the Wade Kitson Legion is probably the better uh, comparison to make right. because it, it's a, it's a new start. It's a, it's a fresh start. It's a, a, a new takes on familiar characters. Right. Uh, yeah, I think that's, that'd be a perfect way to, to approach this. And so then I guess it really comes down to, doesn't it, um, the skill of the storytellers. Cause now, now 
Peter, I, I, I think I have to, I have to stop us here and then go read those Wade issue, Wade Kitson issues, uh, because now I'm really curious. Well, and as we said at the top of this episode, when we did that previous Tales episode on this first issue, and we compared it to Zero Hour, and we compared it to Wade and Kitson's first issue, the one we liked the most was Wade and Kitson. Yeah, because it gave us the Legion stuff. It gave us a really good premise. It even opened with kind of like a millennium thing where we saw a tour through the ages until we got to the 30th century or 31st century. And we also got good character stuff and some good characterization. Mm -hmm. Um, Even though we came at it with previous Legion history and it still was written, you know, that's the trouble. You can't write Legion as a reboot without without bringing in prior baggage you know Mm -hmm. because bendis even said he loved the before he wrote this he was reading tons of legion and coming you know it's almost like maybe that's what also needs to happen we need to get a creative team that has never read a legion book ever (laughs) and just there's one concept one thing legion superheroes future a future team inspired by Superman in the 20 or the age of heroes in the 20th century. Go. Yeah. yeah. Which, I mean, that is the driving, supposedly the driving uh, force behind this series, or at least that's, that's what we're, that's what we're told. Yeah. So, you know, is, well, oh, and that, uh, that, yeah, it's, that's there. And, and to, to the, the final thing that I didn't get to, oh, to answer your, to answer your question, I think it's pertinent to what we just said to answer your question, you know, about the, are we, are we bringing too much to it versus uh, the, 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 uh, I forget what the the second part of what you said, there, but, but the answer was yes. Yeah. 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 It's, it's both. So what do we do with this now, Peter? (laughs) We never read it again. Ugh. You know, I will say, uh, I having read it now the second time, and then you know, of course rereading parts as I was taking notes and whatnot. Um, I, you know, other than the, the the issues that we have with with this series or the, these first six issues, anyway, uh, as a whole, I actually liked it better than what I remember when I read it the first time. You know, month to month as it was coming out. Yeah, I I feel the same way. I, I I'm I'm going to be hard on this book, but. They reading it as a whole is so much better mm. than reading yes. it as issue to issue because yes. issue to issue, all you do is focus on what is wrong or what is what's not there, and and it yeah it's it's pain it's it's hard it's hard to read it like that. So. So, so what were the what were the, the 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 elements or pieces or what were the things that you were on the reread that you felt better about the series generally? Uh, what, what were those things that that kind of made it worthwhile? I, maybe that's too strong of a word. No, no, I, I understand. Um, I, for me, the the if I go you know by little points by little points, the trident thing even when we covered the first issue way back, turned out to be exactly what was going to happen. That, that Aquaman's Trident, because, because New Earth is just a series of domed cities with no water and then there was something happened to Earth way back when, you bring in the Aquaman's Trident. They, they even mentioned that it could you know help worlds and create oceans and it has all the oceans in it. I knew eventually, okay, then... The Legion are going to go. I think I even said it. Maybe it's the restoration of the oceans that makes the Legion more accepted in the world and in the galaxy. And that is kind of what happened by issue six, because Madam President is like President Brand is saying uh, to Joe Nas, Ultra Boy's father. Look, you might have problems about what exactly happened with this trident. But meanwhile, you stole it. They stole it, so that cancels that out. And they brought back something to this world that was sorely missing, hope, mm-hmm. by putting the oceans back, you know. Right. So I was like, okay, that's a, okay. I, even though I knew that was what was going to happen, um, by the end of it, it was like, okay. 
does that also soften the president who was not happy that they brought in Superboy? Even though, because this is where the this is where those juggling balls get a little weird. Even though in the origin it was her idea to create the Legion in the first place, just like in other continuity, you know, uh, her name is Brand, just like in other continuity, she's just an alien or different different gender, if if that's even what they they are, you know, I don't know. Um, but somewhere along the line, something happened. And we still don't know what that something happened is. We were supposed to get that in that orientation and Superboy just never got to that point. So she was not happy with the Legion throughout these issues. But because they restored the oceans, now things, you know, okay. But I'm like, but then are we going to get where the strife came from? Yeah. Or is that going to be another one of those points that Bendis just lets go? And that's going to frustrate me. Mm -hmm. The... The biggest thing that I really liked, and this might be an answer to everything um, that we've been talking about. It is in issue number five. It's the second part of the origin where we see that after the Trinity, the first person to join the team was Block. Yeah. How crazy is that? <laughs> and then the second person is Brainiac 5 because right? Saturn Girl's like, okay, we're going to do this. We need to do smart. And if you, if you, if you got smart, if you need smarts, then you got to go to Kolu and you got to get Brainiac 5. Okay. So he has this really, this is the most interesting stuff to me. And it also is Bendis playing, he's playing around in it in Young Justice, he's playing around with it in Justice League, and he's, he, he wants to hit this baby so hard, where he starts, Brainiac starts talking about, okay, the age of heroes, the lost and broken Earth lore you are modeling the Legion after is my obsession. Um, Brainy is basically saying to the Trinity why he thinks this is a good idea and why he thinks it's an important idea. And then he says, I have facts that show it is then that era that holds us all together. Cosmic Boy says all. Brainiac 5 says all times, all realities, all dimensions. The mixtures of multiversity, powers, powers sources, sciences, and magic, and those looking to us and abuse all... and." And those looking to us and abuse all of it, this may must stay with us. I have growing data of severe reality abnormalities at the edges of our ga- galactic, and I have discovered it is all connected to the age 1,000 years ago, to this age 1,000 years ago. Um, simply put, as long as that era survives itself, we will. If it does not, This, all this, will all simultaneously disappear, and there is nothing we can do to stop it. In a very meta way, I was like, oh, this is almost a comment of every Legion reboot. Mm. That, And I think I've said this before, either on this show, I know I said it on a Crisis Tapes. The reason why the quote-unquote present meaning the 21st century is so important in all of these crisis stories is because that's where the creators live. (laughs) (laughs) So of course the Legion is always going to be affected and we are always going to have a different Legion, which is almost what Brainiac 5 is saying here Mm -hmm. is because whatever happens back then, that earth is the most that is the most important part of all time, whether it's the 20th century, like the original crisis or the 21st century, like final crisis and whatever we're getting now, you know, Um, because there was also a comment about in issue one about new earth. And someone says, um, they talk about the destruction of New Earth, and they said, you know, what happened to Earth is so upsetting. A lot of lessons have been learned. Chameleon Boy says, if you take a wider perspective, 
we like we like to think that the earth after all those trials and tribulations and revamps and reboots uh that earth survived right so again i was like oh you know we we made mention of that word reboot and i was like oh see that is so interesting by the year by the 31st century the earth is so weakened because it's probably been through hundreds of crises by then so, you know if you go so go back to let me put my crisis kid hat on right if you go back to the original crisis it opens with the origin of the multiverse and it specifically says what should be one became many by issue 10 or 11 of the crisis they do that origin again and now it's all one earth, right? And they said what was many has become one. And it actually mm. visually is larger on the page than those multiple earths from issue one. George Perry uh. drew it, you know, larger. Then you could say, okay, an infinite zero hour messed with time, but really it was infinite crisis that again kind of created all, it created a new earth. And Morrison's final crisis you know you started to get this whole thing called the orrery of worlds where where our earth was down on the bottom and the multi the other earth sort of triangled up right and if you if you knocked off like earths in the top of the triangle fine but if you knocked out that one earth down on the bottom everything crashes the source point the source point so in one hand that earth has to be so strong on the other hand, by the time you get to the 31st century, it is so weak, <laughs> right? And I, I, I'm probably pulling way more out, but you, you said, what are the things that kind of I latched on? That's what I latched on? Yeah. That these, that Brainiac kind of is living in, a, in an existence where he's like, we are just who we are now because of what the 21st century was then, but that can change at any minute which means this legion can change at any minute, which is exactly what it happens every time there's an effing crisis that goes on. Yeah. Right now. Um, so what do you think of those do, thoughts? Do you think, do, uh, is that just uh, Bendis being clever and, and throwing in this meta commentary or, or I guess, and, or uh, is he, is he trying to build up to something? And I think, I think that's, the, you know, I mean, you already said that uh, earlier. I think that's the case, but I, I don't know. I just, it, it is, it's, is it earned? Uh, what's, what's the importance of it? What, right. what's, the, how does it connect to the 21st century? And I guess that's why we have the, the, the Justice League versus Legion of Superheroes uh, series going on right now. Yeah. And you read the next six issues. So, you know, does what I'm saying even play out in those issues? I don't know. And whatever happened because of the pandemic and whatever happened because of their mm. plans and sales, right. you know? Right. Yeah. I think that comment that Brainiac says about something on the edge of the galaxy, you know, that's obviously a hint um, and probably a hint to the great darkness and whatever. Mm -hmm. um, but they only are getting around to it two years later, two, two point something later, you know, because <laughs> this is 2019. Well, to be fair, issue five came out in 2020. So two years. Yeah. So, yeah. and I know, even though I haven't finished Young Justice, I know there was a lot of multiverse stuff in that. There was, yeah. So uh, another thing that, uh, since we're talking about this, the, I, I agree, this, this aspect of the Legion, this is when it became more than just, oh, we have the Legion back, and here's all these characters, and, and here we're being introduced to these different versions of these familiar characters. Um, uh, it became more than just a group of, superheroes it, there was there was some uh, i think this is where we're getting a little bit of weight to the series as a whole yeah but it's so tied directly to to the past and we get and obviously with superboy being there but that i mean that that makes sense because he's they've set it up in this new reality of dc comics that he is the reason instead of his father for being the inspiration and it's not just him because they they talk about the age of heroes right it's it's you know and they've, and they've done this before with with legion legion uh legion's past uh where they you know they, they've tried to uh, decentralize the 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 reason for their existence as not being just superman 
uh, and you could you can have uh, or take objection to that as as you will, uh, <laughs> uh, which I, I do. But 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 I, but it makes sense. I mean, it's it, it, the you, the superhero aspects of the DC of DC Comics is more than just Superman, even though he's you know the origin point. Um. And so, yeah, like I said, this, this there's more to it than that. Uh, oh, well, I was talking about the past. I, I'm sorry. I meant I meant to also talk. You know, they, uh, Superboy brings in Robin, right? So we get mm-hmm. we got the the Batman Superman uh, connection there, right? Uh, we get a little tidbit of of Robin, you know, because the way the the way the Legion reacts to Robin, uh, and and what uh, Chameleon Boy even says about him, which was, uh, you know, uh, he he wouldn't he wouldn't joke about. Um, Hitler, or he makes some sort of Hitler reference in, baby in relation, Hitler. baby Hitler, yeah, yeah, to 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 Robin, uh, which is like, whoa, what's you know, we get little tidbits like that, but but that's 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 what I mean though, is that between Superboy and Robin and the connection to the 21st century and what what uh, Brainiac Five reveals to the Trinity here, I don't know, I just there's there's to me there's too much that's what i that's that's what i meant by the comment of my uh, my earlier comment about you know, there's too much superboy is that there's too much connection to the past it makes to me it makes the legion itself completely secondary to whatever's going on here and i realize that's part of the game but it's you know uh with with what we have what are what we're examining in the main legion project podcast pretty much they just left them alone and, and, you know, they developed that, that corner of the DC universe as time went on. And rarely did we, did we have any kind of direct connection? Uh, and except for the few times that the Legion would go back in the past and, and guest star in somebody's book. So I, I don't know. It's a different, it's a different paradigm uh, now where, and I think part of this is Bendis doing this part um, that everything has to connect yeah. because because if it connects, it has importance. And but my reaction was, well, you're just making this concept, you're diluting this concept by and making it less important by connecting it so much to the past. Right. Between the Trident, between Rob Damien, between oh, yeah. having yeah. a Doctor Fate character, have a Gold Lantern. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Superboy even says, "I noticed you don't have any Batman-related characters here." You know. I mean, to be fair, the entire Legion history up until 1980 was Superboy and, you know, mm-hmm. um, that you're, that's true. Yeah. You know, and it took, you know, until they finally made it Legion of Superheroes and they but, said, right, but, we gotta get rid of Superboy. but even Superboy was this separate thing from the rest of the DC, uh, modern time, mm-hmm. uh, era. Right. I mean, this, yeah. it was, yeah. So they, they broke a lot of things with, uh, yeah. with crisis. <laughs> I thought it was interesting that there was a comment that says, you know, Superboy, who who will be the one and true Superman. Mm-hmm. Did you catch that? Yeah, yeah. That was interesting. Obviously, that's Bendis's bias, probably. Yeah. <laughs> Are we going to ever see that, Peter? That's the question. I mean, he does have his own title now, you know. Sure. I mean, you know, I get, they're certainly pushing something, whether that sticks or not. And I, th- I guess really the point is, you know, they went back in time to Unity Day because it was John Kent's idea in the Superman issues, which is why I think those issues are important. Yeah. Um, and they, they, they talk about the importance of having Superboy here because of what they can learn. And then Superboy turns around and says, uh, I think you guys are doing pretty well without me. Mm-hmm. Maybe they should have gone back to when he actually had some experience not just dumb luck that he came up with unity day. <laughs> right. Know? I mean, right. he did have experience at that point because he was older. He had just gone through his trials with jor and he was a couple years older now. And he had all that experience out in space, but it was, it was educational in a school sense, not in sort of like a practical sense. Like he had a superheroic sense. Yeah. Like he hadn't really lived as a Superman like he is now in his mm, time, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. Yeah. So maybe you pull that, maybe in, they should have really waited and pulled him from, <laughs> you know, 2028 instead of 2019. So, uh, since we're talking about this the, and, and the whole uh, uh, meta aspect that you brought up. So there was something, I forget which issue it is, 
where Brand is really ticked. Yeah, okay, here we go. In issue two, Brand says one of the main jobs of the United Planets, and by extension her as the president, is to protect the space-time continuum from those who would abuse it. And yet the Legion completely flaunt that by going to get the inspiration for, for their team and, and the United Planets, right? Right. Uh, so that was, so it's, to me, that's kind of related to the, the, the thing that we've been talking about now for several minutes about the, uh, the reboots and, and the meta aspect. Right. Um, but w- that aspect of it is like, wow, what, you know, the United Planets was, we, we saw the, the birth of the United Planets in this current DC continuity and it had nothing to do with, with the space-time continuum, at least in the way that I'm interpreting her comment. So what has happened in the intervening thousand years? And I don't, and I, I will say, I don't think we get that in the Legion of Superheroes Millennium two issue mini. It's just Rose journeying through those time periods. So what kind of connection is, is Ben is trying to make to this aspect of the United Plants was formed to or, or, can, or exist currently anyway, uh, to protect the space-time continuum. From what? From whom? Besides the, the general, you know, those who would abuse it, as she says. Right. I mean, it has to be the development of time travel, which happened way before the 31st century. Unless it was time travel became more common by that time. Yeah. Does it have anything to do with the destruction of Earth? Yes. Um, um, and, uh, you know, Bendis wanting to play around with with uh, some, you know, you come to D.C., you got to do a crisis. You know, <laughs> I mean, he wrote Secret Invasion and he wrote, yeah. um, did he write Siege? I can't remember. No, I can't remember. He wrote, a, I thought he wrote another Marvel event. Um, I mean, really, it was Hickman, the one who did who did the who did that second secret wars and that one yep. was like you know like a crisis event so mm-hmm. maybe he was bendis was like i want to do a crisis and he's this is how he sets it up um you know i can remember saying please don't don't let him don't let him do a crisis don't let yeah him do it. yeah it's it's interesting and and it's not quite there and then you try to throw in you know well then what the heck was rose forest and i mean i do like the whole the idea that once that these, okay. So these characters were initially brought in to, to become part of like, you know, the young Republicans, basically, you know, like they were meant to come in to be the young United plan, the youthful, you know, whatever the term was, I forget. What right. It was. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And then immediately Saturn girl's like, eh, she has good intentions, but she's got us marked to be weapons, you know? And, yeah. Um, I did like the three of them. See, that was one of those moments where it's just three characters talking and Garth is very indecisive and, and rock is like, Hey, I'm a champion. You know, of course I need to be here. You know, it was a nice little switch on their, on their personalities. Yeah. And then Saturn girl's like, mm, maybe we need to be. And then they do. They're like, well, let's just be something else. Let's, let's be superheroes. Let's, let's do something else. And then she does the, the president does come in and then they get attacked by the Horaz. And I was like, oh, that's okay. See, that's interesting. Well, I guess that was before that conversation. That at least is that, is that Legion origin impulse, right? The whole reason the Legion was founded was because RJ Brand was attacked and she saw these three heroes step up and save her, right? Or him back in the original. So we did get that again. And then that's why she's like, oh, now I have a new thought. Maybe you need to be you know, this, this, she's the one who says, maybe you need to be the legion, a a legion, my legion, right? But it's the kids that go, okay, we can't do it under her. And there's even the scene where the science police in the present come to um, put them on lockdown. And they're all like, well, who's authority? And they're like the presidents. And she's, and they're like, we have autonomy. Like, I don't know, it's, we're, we were chartered as being, you know, and I was like, okay, see, that's, that's interesting to me, because that is Legion lore, you know, that they're meant to kind of work outside of, alongside of, 
the law, if you want to say. So. Yeah, but that that really works in uh, our version of the Legion because R.J. Brand is an independent entity. He sure. he's he's a he's a wealthy dude who who can circumvent, mm, bend perhaps <laughs> the rules. And uh, but in this one, you know, Brand is the president of the United Planets, and and. I guess uh, I want a little bit more of that. I want to, I, cause we don't get the, what comes next in that history. Sure. Um, you know, how did they negotiate this autonomy that they, they claim to have uh, considering that brand is president and, you know, therefore under the uh, presumably under the aegis of the United planets. So I, that's, that's a minor point. I just, I, I just, I, I, I find I want to know these little bits and details and yeah, it's only six issues, but you know, we get uh, an issue. Well, not even a full issue, but like more like a between two issues, we get an issue of the origin of the Legion of Superheroes, and yeah. we still don't have uh, enough details for my for my taste. And we know that there's only six more issues. It's not like this became an ongoing series that like they initially wanted. It only ra- it wraps up at twelve, so it's like mm-hmm. how much. How much more of everything that's laid out in these six issues can you really explore in the next six? Yeah. yeah. To its end, you know. If you know it's going to be an ongoing, then you can just keep those things going. Well, I, and I think but, that I think that is I think that was the intent. Um, but sure. you know, certain things obviously uh, affected that, and now right. we we're where we're at now. They're going to say the pandemic, but it's like no, it's just this is not it. I really, you know, you sort of want to. I I know I said this, I made this comment one time, like on on an old CGS episode, no creator goes into creating a book uh, badly, right? Oh yeah. Nobody wants to go in, you know, unless you're Mike Grell and you're trying to sabotage Tyrock, you know, but you know, (laughs) nobody goes in and says, I'm just going to make this a mess. Maybe John Byrne does. I don't know, whatever. Mm, But, mm. but I will say this. You also can't turn around and say to me that at the end of certain comics, that the when they are released, that an editor or writer, you know, they have to go, nah, that wasn't good, you know. Like if, you, <laughs> if you're an artist, if you're a creator, I've done it plenty of times, you know, like where you just like in theater, when you're doing a show, a musical, and you have ten numbers, twenty, twelve numbers that you got to choreograph within that musical. When you're starting to get down to the end, when it's almost opening night and you still got two more to do, usually you're like, eh, I'm going to, whatever that, okay. It's not, <laughs> I'll make it better when I, if I ever do the show again, you know? So I sort of want to sit down and go, you know, the execution of this book is not poor when you no. think of the art. Yeah. And, and clearly, because I think you you saw a script that Bendis did at one point or another. I think you sent me a link way back on Instagram or something like that. There is a script. You know, there is there is stuff. There's thought behind this book. But, so, so it's not like it's a poor book where, you know, it's not like it's, like, you know, unreadable because the artwork doesn't make sense or whatever. There's like one or two panels that I was like, I have no idea what order I'm supposed to read these word balloons in, but okay. But you do want to sit bend us down and go, you lost your way on this, right? Yeah. Come on. Like, be honest. Like, don't, <laughs> yes, I know what you wanted to do, but what came at, he has to look at this and go, eh, I probably could have done something different, you know? I would hope that he's smart enough to kind of say, you know, that's what it came out to be, because that's certainly how I felt. Like I, you know, I feel like mm, this, this didn't go the way I think they wanted it to, which is unfortunate because it is, it is a product. It is a, a lovely package. You know, the, the artwork's beautiful. The, the, I really, there are some scenes I really like and some of the designs I I'm kind of like, yeah, okay. I dig that. Um, But then it's like, there's only so much of the wrapping you can enjoy before you got to get to the innards, you know? Yeah. The meat of it. Yeah. Yeah. What did you find that you enjoyed uh, on your second read? Did we already touch on it or was there anything I missed? I didn't cover. Like, what did you, what did you find? Well, besides the, the, the larger uh, ideas that they were 
trying to explore here, at least introduce, right? So something something to hold on to in terms of a oh, this is interesting type thing. Um, the thing that I the that I like like I said earlier on the second read through, I I rather enjoyed uh, being introduced to some of these characters, and obviously we don't get because like I said, there are thirty four of them, thirty four legionnaires, uh, thirty six if you count triplicate girls duplicates <laughs> right sure sure right and and speaking of uh the reason I, I i say that specifically is that that was one of the characters that i quite enjoyed seeing and it seemed like through the six issues and i'm gonna definitely gonna be looking at this at the next six uh that character probably has more lines in the script than mm-hmm. other characters uh which leads me to believe that she has become or she was becoming a favorite of either Bendis or Sook or both. Uh, to, and, and then we also get, I forget which issue it is now, but uh, those those opening recaps, those splash page recaps that we get, I enjoy those quite a bit more because because of the the little tidbits of the, about the characters themselves. Rock does one. Dawn Star. I guess uh, Dawn Star does one. That was one of my favorites as well. Uh, and, then, and then Triplicate Girl also did one. Uh, or, or had one, and so it was. It was that kind of stuff where it's like, oh, that's that's really cool, and and we get other or oh, Saturn Girl. Uh, my God, so much focus on Saturn Girl, and considering what we are what we are talking about in in our our Baxter Legion episodes w- uh, coming out of the univ- or you know through the Universal Project, specifically relating to Saturn Girl, it was really interesting to see the focus on Saturn girl in this series as well. Now, 40 years later. Yeah. Right. The, that character seems to inspire a lot of, uh, uh, a lot of focus on, on these creators over time. And I just find that fascinating. And she's the one I think that has existed in probably the purest form of a Saturn girl than any of the other characters, because mm-hmm. I think she, I you know in that first issue where she where she's time traveling with Superboy, and she says she's trying to talk about the Legion, and he's like, "Wow, you're really formal." And she goes, "Yeah, I am." And it's like, <laughs> yeah, because that's what they did, right? They talked in in their Legion codes, and they talked about their charters, and they talked about their you know always you know we well we got to do this, well the leaders got to do this, and you know that especially in the Silver Age, um, and you know she's not terribly different from she's blonde, she's 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 got the Saturn girl colors and um, uh, you can't even say her short hair is different because she had short hair in the uh, mm-hmm. Gary Frank, Paul Levitz and Jeff Johns thing, you know, like all that stuff. She had short hair. So I thought she was the one that was like, kind of like the closest, surprisingly the other one sort of the closest um, that we got, that we actually got some, characterization from um i i really thought ultra boy kind of hit a lot your boy right i thought yeah you really hit some of the points of why you like the old ultra boy you know yeah yeah i i you know obviously i i think we talked about this in in that previous episode where we discussed issue one um you know the fact that the the this this relaunch of the legion starts off with him yeah you know i love that yeah. And and it and it just and it, and it it didn't just end with with that that introduction of him pursuing and obtaining the trident. You know, there there was more to it with his father, and the fact you know he he apologizes to the team uh, uh, for joining without. I think he did, or am I confusing him with with Chameleon yeah. Boy? Yeah, in, he did. In, he in a different issue. Yeah, yeah. And it's just, it was just really cool to see the focus on on uh, on 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 uh, my, one of my favorite uh, legionnaires. So, but yeah, I agree. Uh, I I felt like we were getting, uh, uh, I think even a real different Jonah than we've seen before. But I will also preface that by saying there's not a whole lot of characterization to Jonah, even in our Baxter <laughs> run Legion. Uh, so. You know, there. In other words, he's he's a bit of a blank slate. Where I, whereas I don't think Saturn Girl is right, and I think that's okay. I think we even talked about like it's nice to have one some of the Legionnaires that you know, they're not a hothead, they're not an introvert, they're not an extrovert, they're not a they're they they're like 
Ultra Boy's like, I'm a legionnaire. Yay. Yeah. I yeah. have a cute girlfriend. Yay. You know, what more do I, I got awesome powers. Yay. You know, and like, that's yeah. okay. Yeah. You know, it's not okay necessarily in this volume because everybody's a blank slate, you know, yes. most of the characters are blank slate. So I want to yeah. know, you know, we got like Wildfire who was, I still think this version of Wildfire is a girl, but um, mm. uh, we got Wildfire being Wildfire, right? You know, but yet not being Wildfire, like apologizing yeah. for throw it for throwing their wildfire on Mordrew because then Mordrew turned it around into a magic thing. And they're like, oops, sorry and, and crack that. and cracking jokes. Yeah. You know, like going, eh, I think we probably broke a whole bunch of laws, but eh, you know, we, it's like, I haven't read it yet. <laughs> you know, I haven't read the charter yet. So I don't know. Um, who else did we get? Oh, what did you think of like, say for instance, uh, Shadowless and cosmic boy being an item? Yeah, and the rest a, of the team going. What a pairing is? It, do they refer to it as a pairing? And and a everybody's pairing. like, we didn't get the we didn't get the memo. Such, yeah. Essentially, right? Yeah, that was yeah interesting. Uh, right. But but she is, uh, you know, this is you know we're, we've been complaining, <laughs> criticizing some of some of how Bendis approaches things here in terms of characterization. But uh, in just a few words, you know, we get the idea that she is a strong uh person uh in 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 this interaction she is definitely the 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 stronger of the two in in this yeah. relationship cuz uh, cosmic boy is just like he has he, that poor guy is just way over his head not in just in terms of the relationship with with uh, this new relationship with shadowless but being the legion leader as well yeah yeah, which is which kind of makes sense. It's, it's it's like a counterpoint to him being the champion of that sport on Braille, but then he comes here and he's like, he thinks he's gonna be the champion, but it's like oh, it's a little a little much. I also like though when they point out that they're paired. Monel was like, "Oh, this is news to me." Yeah, yeah, right. And I was like, "Oh, see, when you're see, a longtime Legion fan, you're exactly. Like, oh, I get it, exactly." And, and it he- was go ahead. Oh, uh, Monel uh, also. Well, no, I can't speak to that. Actually, I think that comes up in the next six issues. Never mind. Go ahead. Where he's where he's kind of in competition with Superboy. Uh, yeah. See, I, yeah, yeah, you're right. They, they, okay, they they do talk about that here. All right. Yeah. yeah. And, and but but there's yeah yeah I think it is in the, right it is in this yep, where they're, they're hinting hap- mm-hmm. they're hinting that um or or heavily suggest anyway that that Monel is a descendant of right of John Kent's. Right, because they say he he kind of he says uh, Superboy's like, oh yeah, you know, we knocked him out, and Monel's knocked out Jonah's dad when he comes to Earth, and Monel's like, yeah, well, I did it first, basically, you know, basically, <laughs> yeah, I did it first, <laughs> and then he goes and flies off, and then one of the other characters, I don't know if it's a White Witch or whatever, says what exactly what you said, yeah, well, that's he's he's that way because he is your, and then it stops, and it's like, yeah. oh come mm-hmm. on, Bendis, come on. You know, and it's like, okay, is he a descendant, like you said, or is there, you know, some something else to it, which is a mm-hmm. different dynamic, you know, are they really going to explore that? I don't know. I mean, unless they do in the next six issues, but that might be another plot point that just gets away from them because they don't have the coverage of it yet, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I, th- I think Bennis is writing, you know, for 10 years down the road Yeah, and they're just not going to get there. No. And and maybe that's part of the problem is that he was trying to do that, knowing that there's there's no guarantee, obviously. Uh and, and so he's just trying to throw in everything he possibly could in the hopes that it would have a longevity so that he could come back to these things down the road. So whose fault is that? Is that Bendis being too to just uh, having too many high hopes? Is it the, mm-hmm. the intricacy of having someone like Ryan Sook on the book. Is it DC? Is it the Legion concept itself? You know, <laughs> whose fault is yeah. it? You know? Yes. Like yes. I always go back to, <laughs> I go back to when Roy Thomas was starting to write All-Star Squadron at DC. And his goal was to put all of those Golden Age stories together, make them make sense, right? Like the development of the, especially during the wartime of the Justice Society. And that's why he created the All-Star Squadron as a way to kind of bring in those sto- in, bring those stories in and out of this new team, right? But he also wanted to do it in chronological order of the war. 
So All Star Squadron went for what sixty, seventy issues, mm. and he only covered four months of the war because he was trying to be so. I was. I always go back and I go, Roy, how many issues of this book did you think you were going to write? A thousand? Because you only got barely out of barely past Pearl Harbor, you know, and like you had decade you had years to go it was like roy snap it up here you know and then crisis happened and that was it forget it you know so so, so wait we had decompressed stories back then <laughs> well i mean if you think <laughs> of it in a timeline sense sure but then you have things like uh well i wanted to bring up starman james robinson starman because in there is a series that you know, the first couple, the first year of it, there are so many seeds mm. that do play out by the time you get to issue. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Or whatever it is. Um, but I wanted to there in the um, stars, my destination story arc in Starman, which is the one story arc that most people thought went on a little too long late. It's, it's like right before the last two big story arcs. Um, and Starman is out in space and he meets Adam Strange and blah, blah, blah. There's a subplot in there about the creation of the League of Planets, I think it's called. Oh, yeah. And and that was meant to be kind of like an early precursor for the United Planets as well. And I don't know whatever became of it, if they touched on it in any other book. They might have like in other James Robinson books, but I don't, I just don't remember. Um. We're just in a in a day and age, you know. Books don't go to issue one hundred. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, we uh, have unless unless you're Batman, <laughs> unless you're Batman, right? I was gonna say we have Nightwing heading there, but it's Nightwing. It's a Batman book, you know. Mm-hmm. At least the DC thinks it's a Batman book, right? And it currently has an amazing creative team on it. So yeah, but, yeah. Um, uh, the only book that went from the beginning of Rebirth uh that had a other than like tom king on batman was joshua williamson on flash where he was on that book mm. for a long time yeah and you don't get that you don't get that often in, mm-hmm. with dc and marvel anymore and so it's like i don't know what they thought they were gonna do with this book, you know but yeah was there anything i think maybe i touched on it with the whatever is on the edge of the galaxy but since you read the first issue of justice league versus legion of super is there anything else that i missed that these six issues touch on or it's not until maybe the next six yeah i don't uh, i don't think so I, I i i can't recall um uh that that first issue other than reintroducing the legion <laughs> <laughs> in in a way um and that this whole darkness thing yeah uh, that's going on it, it's it, it you know this is that that issue probably is uh, a good representation of the th- things i think we're not enjoying about this series mm. and we should say that by you know as we're recording it there is a second one that has been out but we haven't read it yeah and they like in this issue six when gold lantern finally makes his appearance you know i'm gold lantern of the galactic they keep calling it the galactic yeah and uh super war is like gold lantern someone says he has such an amazing story wait till you hear it the lantern is coming the lantern is coming um and they apparently you get the sense that he is very powerful and the justice league legion book is also supposedly supposed to be about gold lantern as well yeah yeah there there is a there is a major focus on gold lantern in uh that first issue too i think i think similar to how ultra boy introduces this series or is the character that introduces this series i think gold lantern is the character that introduces that setup as well uh, if i recall correctly the pov yeah yeah you know the thing you just mentioned um uh you know the the comment about gold lantern he has such an amazing story there's that's one of the things I actually liked on the reread as well was this enthusiasm that the Legionnaires have um, uh, first, uh, I think are primarily um, shown by their reactions or their comments about Superboy coming, but then things like that. And there, there seems to be 
uh, a lot of those things kind of peppered throughout that. I, I know I found, I found it really, um, uh, comforting. Um, yeah, I just, just, you know, it's not all doom and gloom. I, you know, it's, I'm, I'm probably, it, this is probably my pandemic reading reaction. <laughs> It's charming. It's charming. Yeah, and charming. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. yes. When, when Karate Kid's like, oh, I'm Karate Kid and we're the Legion of Superheroes. Or, or yeah. when, when um, this, is, this is a good example of it, where Superboy's talking to – Superboy takes that same co- sort of exuberance and whatever to, to Damien. And he goes, they're really cool and they have their tags and they all do poses. They all pose like Power Rangers, <laughs> right? And then Damien's like, really? He goes, well. And then Damien's like, well, I guess we do that too. Like, yeah, that's part yeah. of being a superhero, right? <laughs> yes. Like posing, yes. you know? Yeah, that's fun. Yeah, exactly. What you, what you just said, I, I, the word occurred to me too, uh, but you said it, the exuberance of youth. That's, that's what I get from this. The, the, you know, we're, our complaints aside, Bendis is, is hitting that. He is, he is, he is on top of, he's got his thumb on that one. And, and that's totally working for me. Right. I love that part. And they do it in a way that feels very, it feels right. Like, like when Brainiac 5 has Chameleon stay behind where he sends everybody out of the lab, but he says to Chameleon, Chameleon, like, you know, how does he, how does he word it? I forget where, what issue it is. Let me see. Uh, yeah. Uh, Brain Fry says, uh, uh, Reap, I'm sorry. You, you and I haven't had more time together. And then he just looks at him. Mm-hmm. He gives, gives him a look and communion boy is like, um, you are the smart one, but don't you think there's stuff going on that might need our attention? And again, Brandy just gives him this. It's not accusatory. It's not. He's just waiting. Yeah. He's like waiting, yeah, cause, yeah. Cause he's, cause he's, 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 you know, uh, brain five is, is like five steps ahead. <laughs> yeah. And but Chameleon Boy is not that far behind because he he does realize what what uh, what uh, Branding Five is. I don't I, I can't think of the right word to describe the way that that Sook drew his face. Yeah, it's kind of like he's kind of like, come on, like I know you're hiding something. Yeah, you, yeah. You, you want to? I know, I know what it is you're hiding. You want to tell me. But Come you on. need to t- you need to say it. You yeah. need to say it. <laughs> yeah, and then he says, "Yes, my mother is the president." And yeah, right, because he, you know, there's someone in the legion that has insider knowledge about the president, and it's Chameleon, just like in the old mythos. Yeah, that was fun. I also really liked because we had a question of whether this character really existed or not when Invisible Kid popped up, <laughs> and it's the a couple Jacques- times. Yeah, it's the Jacques Vicar visible kid not the lyle nord uh version except in millennium it was lyle oh was it yes oh, apparently yes uh he, he he mentions his name specifically in that group shot at the end of issue two okay of millennium and um uh apparently that was n- that was a mistake and they have since corrected that in the the trade oh uh probably the digital version i, I meant to go look that up um, but it was always supposed to be, or at least retconned to always have supposed to have been Jacques instead oh, of Lyle. Interesting. Yeah. What was interesting though about it where he, he, he pops out and because they're like, was it about the trident? Somebody's like, somebody sold the trident. They're like, well, maybe that invisible kid, because we don't really was, know where he's at. Right? Shadow last made, yeah. made a disparaging comment about <laughs> and then the he invisible guy. Up. Yeah. And he pops up and he goes, <laughs> uh, I'm right here. Yeah. But he also made a comment of something like you people all talk too loud. Like, I guess not only is like his people invisible, but I don't remember what issue it was, but not only that, but that maybe his people don't talk because they're invisible, right? Like they're just all, that's like part of the invisible thing. I don't know. (laughs) There it is right there. He goes, "Ah, why are you always talking behind my back? My name was Jacques Vicar, the invisible gentleman, not kid, no kid. What do you, what Oh, he calls them talkers, right? Because he's invisible. He doesn't talk. Crot talkers, yeah. Yeah, crot talkers. You know, I, I, I sort of took it as maybe his species doesn't talk that much or maybe his, you know, whatever. <laughs> I don't know where he's from. I don't know. Does it say, does it say Earth? Because if it says oh. Earth, then it, then it doesn't on his thick, thick tag or whatever the heck those things are called. I don't have my but, glasses, Peter. I can't read that. It's too small. Yeah, it's, he's from Earth. It says Earth. Oh, okay. Well, then maybe that's not the case. But still, I thought that was fun. 
That's very similar to Mark Wade and Kitson with Adam Girl, with Shrinking Violet, Adam Girl, where they don't believe she exists because she's always. Oh, involved. I forgot about. Yes. And yes. then it becomes a plot point where she actually shows up and you're like, oh, my God, she's real. <laughs> See, I kind of think they should have kept Lyle Norg and Jacques. I, yes. Put, I thought the same thing. Uh, yeah. They're invisible. Who cares? Like, <laughs> like, maybe they just swap out, you know, like that'd be great. Like like twins in a weird sort of way. Yeah, yeah right. So that was fun. I did appreciate that. That was that was quite enjoyable. Okay. Um, do you have any thoughts about the covers? Um, uh, I mean, I love I love the first uh, issue. Um, that, I mean that w- that was the the print that uh, they put out that mm-hmm. uh, Sook did, and and uh, I was able to get a copy of for me as well. Uh, Thank you. Yeah, and. Uh, you know, I uh, generally they they seem to be well. They, I was gonna say they get busier and busier, but I, actually they don't because there's so many characters on on most of these covers, um, except for, I guess for the last the last few. But I mean, they're nice. I uh, I don't know. I they speak what, to the you, in, interior. Yeah, what's going on. You know, somewhat. Yeah, you know, I think some. Yeah. yeah, and I also. I, uh, Sorry, I, I have a problem with the way that that Sook draws eyes because there's a lot of characters that have the same exact shape and expression of, in their eyes. Mm. So, uh, on the covers especially. So, maybe it's because of the future. Remember, there's Superboy says to Damien, you know, it smells different, light <laughs> bounces off of things differently, right? Yeah, yeah, that maybe could be. We, yeah, maybe their what vision. Do you, what do you What do you think of the 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 logo design on? So there, it's all the same with that that slanted logo going across the top left corner to the right. Yeah. Really just a focus on the Legion symbol more than anything. Yeah. Yeah. Um, trying to make it look different because it's a book about the future, maybe. Mm-hmm. Giving it a different design. If it sits on a rack, that's probably the only thing you're going to see sticking uh, out. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. Yeah, and then I bought some of the the alternate covers, as I was saying to, to Eric before we started record, recording. There's two really lovely Jim Chung ones, one focusing on the Trinity, you know, one focusing mm, on... I should have got that one. ...on the whole team, you know. Oh, yeah, dang. Um, and then <laughs> a third one also for issue three, also with Superboy, you know, right up in center, you know. yeah. Then they get into, hmm, I should have looked up who, oh, right, it's right here. Um, covers by um, Alex Garner, who has a much softer presentation to the books. Oh, yeah. There, right. The problem is they all kind of look the same. The same, yeah. Well, that's that's. I think that's kind of my complaint with the the main Sook cover. Well, he didn't. He, Sook didn't do all those all those. Yeah, covers Travis Moore ones. did some. Yeah, so I, you know, the more. the Sook ones definitely have a, a a sameness about them, whereas the others, the other, I guess it is it just two. Is it four and six that are not Sook covers? Yeah, four definitely, and six is by. That's by Sook. Oh, it is. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, I, yeah. Because the eyes, I can see that now. <laughs> it's, it's just, it, it's just uh, four. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, there, there, there is a sameness to it, but yeah. Oh, damn, Peter! Now you're, you're gonna make me go buy some more covers to issues I already have. <laughs> Don't do it! Don't do it! Don't give in. Print it <laughs> out, and you, and then just you know, save, yourself, <laughs> save yourself the money. Any any small points that we didn't hit, like in the issues? Is there anything that stuck out that you just want to go, you want to make mention of? Or I'm not sure how the listeners are going to handle this episode. You know, because, <laughs> you know we, we jumped yeah, around because that's, we were all over the place. Yeah, and I think that's that's fair. Like I wrote little things like. In issue one in Planet Gotham, there was a whole bunch of little bat emblems all over the place that I didn't notice the first time I read. Oh, I totally missed that. Yeah. They're all like in the uh, in the in the sewers. You get to see little bat 
all the sewers are designed like bat stuff. Well, don't they also make the comment that planet Gotham is like the safest place in the galaxy? Yeah. Um, somebody made mention of the gem world crisis crystals or something mm-hmm. like that, you know, mm-hmm. which is a tie to young. Yeah. Justice. There are, there are little things like that all peppered throughout this, the six issues, right? Uh, uh, what? there's something I was going to, I was just going to say, uh, Oh, in relation to, again, I don't, I don't know that we talked about this specifically, but about the, the whole idea of the, the, re, the universe rebooting and, and uh, the connection to the past. And uh, Brainiac 5 also says something about when Earth broke into pieces, so did its already rebooted and revised history and timeline. So just, again, reinforcing that, I, I just, that my initial thought was that I have in my notes here was this is how Legion of Superheroes Millennium, that two issue mini, is tied to this book. Mm. Um, not directly because we don't see it on the page, but but for some for some reason that that uh, that comment by Brainiac Five made me think of that. Oh, and then in that same issue where where Madam President, Madam Honor President, is trying to sell the idea of the Legion of Superheroes to the larger United Planets, she shows images of of the 21st century heroes or the, um, by showing the cover to JLA number one, oh, by right. Morrison and Porter, <laughs> and then showing new teen Titans, number one. The Titans, yes. Yeah. yeah. I thought that was an awesome way to, you know, it's, it's the age of heroes yet, you know, the JLA are not exactly represent representative of the youth that the youth aspect of that, that is the Legion. Right. Right. Uh, and so having the Titans there, that makes a lot of sense, even though, you know, the, the focus seems to be on the justice league. And, and then also what issue do you say that was in five? five also in that issue, when brand is talking to the United planets representatives about this Legion idea, uh, she says, she says about the, the, the youth, the, these, these young people, they want us to listen. They want us to inspire. And I, and I thought, my God, uh, that seems to me to be what the youth of today are, how they're, how they're feeling about the, you know, the, the, the quote unquote leadership that they have, um, messing with their lives. You know, they, uh, at least that's, that's, I, I see that uh, maybe, maybe I'm just projecting. Cause I, I want, I want our leadership, uh, to listen and to inspire, not just, <laughs> not just screw up everything as they have been boy issue five really is probably the most important issue outside Mm -hmm. of issue one um here's another brainy quote time is not a straight line it is a concept reality is not stuff it is a concept we live in multiple dimensions and concepts simultaneously and always have just enjoy your space Mm. in other words just enjoy what you have, what Legion book you have now. Because <laughs> he even goes on to say, all you need to know is if Superman fails in his world, we disappear in ours. Realities dis- reality disappears. So Dude, again, boy. Like, you know, which is true, right? All the way back. We're, we're about ready to get to that with the, with the uh, burn Superman, right? When they got rid mm. of pre-crisis Superman, it affected the Legion of Superheroes, right? And it, that's always the case, always the case. So the, the other thing, uh, another, I guess, criticism is that, you know, they, the Legionnaires talk about how important it is that Superboy is there with them then. But I don't get a sense of what that is supposed to be. Why is, why is he important beyond just being the, the, the founder of the United Planets or, or at least the inspiration for it, right? Right. It's it seems to be more than that, and uh, uh, in fact, whatever issue it is that Triplica Girl opens up with, no, no, I'm sorry, it's the Dawn Star issue. You know that we have a plan. Uh, what is that plan? What what are, what are we building up to besides this uh, uh, crisis type stuff that we've been talking about? Well, I mean, it's I think again to go back to issue five right before what I read. Brainiac says, 
um, when he's talking about that they need to, um, the Legion needs to bring United Planets founder John Kent here to be part of it. He is the one to teach us everything we need to know to inspire a proper new age of heroes. We need to have him experience the future and all we have built. And we need to prepare him for his coming role as the one true Superman. He needs our perspective and we need his. So almost, it's almost, ah, okay, right? Like they're saying, we bring him here because he is all of those things, but we bring him here so we can send him back with everything that we have so that he then can become the one true Superman. Hmm. So isn't that just self-serving? Because is is this future the not if not if Superman is tied to reality, you got to make sure he's you know because if they if he doesn't if this one true Superman doesn't learn, then their world ceases to exist. So right. yeah, it's self preservation. <laughs> but but is this the future that is needed or deserves to be in existence? Because based on what we've seen, while it appears that this 31st century is a pretty good place to live in, at least if you're in the United Planets, perhaps, um, its its leader has ulterior motives. At least, at least Saturn Girl perceives them that way. So, uh, and and there's obviously we see some strife between the Legion and and uh, the the bureaucracy, the the president. So you know is. Uh, is, is is this are they worthy of this future i don't know i just it, it's just a straight thought that came to mind when you're when you brought that up so well dc wants to do a legion animated series so it has to be worthy <laughs> <laughs> well you know that I, I i was i was gonna ask you about that too because it seems like uh, you know they 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 brought bendis in he he took over superman he launched these other things, including Legion of Superheroes. Uh, it doesn't appear like it's landed as they wanted it to, and yet they keep they're they're still they're they're keeping it around you know, here with the the new miniseries. And is it because of that? <laughs> because of that uh, that potential? Yeah. We don't even know if it's been greenlit yet, animated series. But they've also shown up in Young Justice, right? Like just here and there. I thought I saw an image of Phantom Girl that looks very similar to this one. Oh, I don't, I don't recall that. Yeah, and and if they're if they are working on a Legion cartoon, Bendis just said they wanted to. If they are, animation takes a long time, so they're like, mm -hmm. okay, well, mm -hmm. we got we got to stick with these Ryan Sook designs because that's what's yes, up. exactly, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, and, and no, well, you know, so like I said, it didn't maybe land like we want, right? Yeah, they're not gonna, they're not gonna reboot it so quickly. I mean, we we as as readers are gonna, we're gonna we're gonna uh, chafe against that too. So <laughs> there's there's no uh, there's no, nothing they can't make us happy. No, <laughs> no, no matter what they do. No. Now it's uh, I'm sure as as I'm sure by the time this episode we release this um the the there's a, Brian and I have done another CGS episode and we go into this whole conversation of this is a lot of what happens in our nostalgia media or in our in our big franchises you know Star Trek wants to mine the few years that they have yet to mine somewhere before TOS, you know, but now with discovery somewhere between enterprise and TOS, they want to explore that. Right. Mm -hmm. Star Wars wants to now mine everything between, you know, the end of the original trilogy and, and the beginning of the, or not the original the episodes one through three and four or five between three and four. Right. Mm -hmm. Like they just, everything's gotta be Skywalker, Skywalker, Tatooine, Skywalker, you know, force, 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 Yoda. <laughs> um, and, and it's like, can we move on? Can we just move on? No. Star Trek Next Generation did it. Can we just move on? I mean, they did. Sure, they did. A hundred years in the future. I mean, come on. Sure, they had bones on the first episode and they eventually brought back, you know, Spock and all that, but it was a new era. 
they at least didn't go backwards like discovery did you know that, yeah yeah like, but strange new worlds going but, backwards but it's still it's still more the same in in one way that's what i mean yeah it is more the same that's what i'm talking about like it's oh, okay. it's them going back to the well I as see. opposed yes, yes. to just go change it make it different like make legion different make make all these things different like but, but I want how, different. how how does that how do you make that work if you make it too different then it's not even that thing so just call it something else right you know is this legion i mean we got, <laughs> just Ooh. because we got saturn girl lightning lad and cosmic boy and they saved brand you know like and they're inspired yeah. by this. but is it legion when half when more than half of the legion fans are like no i don't want to read it ah uh, see i yes it is, is legion. legion okay i i i don't have a problem with with uh this new version uh, I, what i have a problem with is the storytelling <laughs> 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 but the concepts are there is it all there okay and well, I don't know if it's all there, but it, but you know, there's enough, enough there. It. There's enough there to sure. to uh, to to make me interested, and and I I you know just like any other other, just like any other rebooted Legion, you know, it has its own personality and and uh, uh, callbacks, and direction fr- different from what came before, and I think that's okay. All of that's okay as long as the storytelling is strong. You know, if they would have, if Bendis would have given us um, a stronger person to make that trip from the 21st century to the 31st century, not Rose, <laughs> but someone else, it, this book really would have been interesting if that, if it was told from their perspective and not from the Legionnaire's perspective. Like oh, they, see. They were looking at the legionnaires and they, and yeah. they, you know, and maybe Superboy is part of it, you know, maybe she brings Superboy into it somehow and maybe, and they maybe have to learn and investigate. Yeah. Maybe that's, that's, that was the hubris of Bendis was that he was like, okay, I'm, we're doing this. And Rose is that, that character. And, and, uh, I can just, I could just see DC editorial going, mm, yeah, we don't want to do that. Right. <laughs> it's not, it's not enough. She's not enough. She's not recognizable. She's not, she's not, uh, she's not what you're trying to make her out to be, even though they put out two issues uh, really focusing on her before the launch of this book. It's, it's a weird. I would love to know the conversations that were had in the development of this particular sure. story and, sure. and, and series. And Bendis is on contract to write a certain amount of books and, mm. and, you know, an editor is not necessarily going to stand up and, you know, try mm-hmm. to sway things if, because it is Bendis, you know? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Or sure maybe. There was, I'm yeah. sure there's a certain amount of that going on. Yeah. Yeah. Or what if this book was not only Superboy, but like three other new characters to the Legion and, and, and we got, you know, so that there's more people asking questions and, mm. and kind of like the, you know, in our, in our Baxter run that we got those five new heroes and a lot of the story sometimes is told through their perspective, you know, or like through sense of girl or polar boy or whatever. I don't know. I mean, we're trying to, I'm trying to rewrite and you know, these issues are already <laughs> out. So it's, it's a boring thing. <laughs> yeah. I think that's it. I, I don't really have any other, notes um the artwork's you know really nice and um, mm-hmm. would you recommend this if uh, if you oh. if somebody says i i peter i i love the legion i'm listening listening to the legion project podcast uh should i read this this uh sook bendis legion have they ever read legion before uh well let, let's answer that question uh either way I would not give this to a person who has never read Legion before. Okay. I would not give this to a person who has read Legion and maybe disappeared from the Legion and was like, should I read that? I'd be like, no. Really? Go read okay. the Wade and Kits and stuff. Mm-hmm. I, well, I, I'd agree with that for sure. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I'd even, that... I'd even go read the Archie stuff before I'd read this. Really? Yes. Wow. Yes. Okay. Well, I, I agree with you. 
<laughs> as much as I would love to, you know, uh, be the cheerleader for, for this new Legion book. I, I, I think it's a, it's a stretch too far yeah. to give to either of those concepts. <laughs> I even think this is probably like, if we had to rank all the reboots and all the major mm-hmm. or the major, um, create the creative team shifts, right? Like if you think Paul Levitz and Giffen, the beer bombs and Giffen, uh, Abnett and Lanning with, uh, Olivia, Olivier Coipel, Barrett, Wade and Kitson, Johns and Frank. I bet you'd even say Johns and Frank were, you know, read them before that. Like I would, they, this is at the bottom. Wow. It, it just is. And, and again, I'm, it's not because it's terrible. It's, I just feel like it's a little too hard to read for this concept. The thing about the X-Men thing that you talked about with Hickman, the reason why it works is, as you mentioned, Hickman is good about using characters for specific things. Yes. But also, there are multiple X-Men titles. That's kind of defeating my point. But the X universe does get spread out. Like you can, you can, you can go, I'm going to read this. I'm going to, this is the only book you can read the Legion in at the time. So it's, it's like throwing somebody into, into the deep end of, of an ocean. Mm -hmm. Good luck. (laughs) No, no pun intended there. Yeah. Right. So (laughs) where would you? Oh no. No, I would, I would want to, I would want to help them. (laughs) you know, to get into it because I, I want to support the, this, this, this book, these characters, these concepts that I love so much, but yeah, it, I, I would, I would, I would reach towards something else first. Yeah. If, if, if it was, especially if it was a new person. Ooh, that's a, that's a, not a good endorsement. To end <laughs> no, on. no. So, well, okay. So let's, let's, let's try to turn that around to a more positive thing. Um, despite our, we, you know, we criticize out of love, not because we hate this thing. Uh, uh, perhaps the next six issues will yeah, turn sure. us around. We have, we have <laughs> six to go. Right. Exactly. <laughs> um, speaking of that, so Eric and I, we are going to do another tales episode after this episode. Um, we have, we have something in the works that I, I don't want to talk about just yet that we're leading towards the reason why we're doing a tales and we're going to do another one. We uh, we have a couple of things the next tales might be. We're not sure just yet. Eric and I will talk about it. Um, I don't know. May, we hadn't planned on jumping to the next six issues right away because of schedules and some other things. But who knows? Maybe we need to because we're like, <laughs> we need to, to to get this over with. Yeah, right. To get over, <laughs> or to maybe make it, you know, you know. So we'll see. Well, Eric and I will talk about that, you know, uh, off off mic. <laughs> Maybe we need to, you know, redeem this episode. I don't mm, know. Mm-hmm, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, for whatever reason. But just know, this is Tales number nine. We're going to do Tales number 10. That'll be the next episode um, before we get back to the Baxter run. And when we get back to the Baxter run, maybe by then we'll talk about what our plans are, why we're doing, you know, why we're jumping back and forth. Um. But we, whatever we decide for the next tales, we'll definitely announce it on Twitter so that if people want to respond or whatever, they can, depending on what it is, um, you know, you'll want to pay attention to that. So, okay. Anything else? Uh, I think, I think we've uh, kicked this dog uh, enough. (laughs) That was a horrible computer. Cut that out. No, I'm going to leave it in. (laughs) We should say too, as Eric mentioned, there are trades. So if you want to read this, it's also on the DCU app. So there's a way to read it without, mm-hmm. you know, if you've already paid for the app, you can all the whole entire run is on the app, which is nice. Um, so you can go check it out for yourself. And let us know if you're like someone who hasn't read this, if you're a Legion fan and, and you haven't read it and you, you know, let us know if you've had, if you have different opinions, especially if you have a different opinion, I would love, I would love to hear that. Uh, <laughs> the, the, uh, the, 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 ah, the, 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 the different opinion is what I'm trying to say, yeah. uh, which I already said. Um, uh, yeah, just uh, a contrary uh, approach or, or, or viewpoint. That's what I was trying to get at. Yeah. Um, uh, because yeah, I don't, 
I feel bad now, Peter, by how much we've hey, criticized this this series so far. We say all the time, if we don't like something, we're not going to like it. Mm-hmm. We're not gonna, mm-hmm. And it's not even like we could convince each other that we liked this these ones. You know, we 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 often are very we are just honest about our opinions. That's mm-hmm. something. It's just, you know, it's one thing if we get into an issue, like if you don't like an issue or I don't like an issue, and then we start talking about it, we're like, oh, okay, now I like it a little more. And there are parts of it, to be fair, this whole that issue, now that after we talked about it, I do think issue five is a very important issue, and I may want to read it again in light of all the other stuff going on in DC. Um, um, but I don't think we convinced e- each other that these six issues are are super, super amazing, and, yeah, and maybe the hope is we now that we know what these found these foundational issues are, when we go and we've recorded an episode, when we read the next six, and you've already read them before, okay, let's see what happens. You know, we have something mm-hmm. to compare to now. So yeah, I think yeah. that's fair. I think it's totally fair. Nobody wants to listen to. <laughs> I can't listen to podcasts that are constantly positive all the time. Yeah. You know? So, okay. All right, so you can send us comments, Peter at the dailyrios.com or longboxreview at gmail.com. And as I mentioned, watch our Twitter. Uh, once this episode drops, uh, we will then, by, that, by the time this drops, we will have an idea of what we're doing for the next Tales, and we will let you know. And we hope you join us for that episode. Yes, please. All right, Eric, have a good one. You too. Bye. Bye.